Welcome to the Everything Podcast Season 2, Episode 133. And before we get into the main topic of this episode, it is time for Day 6 of the 2023 Advent Calendar. So that was day six. Let's, I'm just checking that I'm correct. Yes, day six of the 2023 advert calendar. But yes, so um, if you've watched any of the last five episodes, you will know that that's how I started each episode um, of the podcast that is being released in December. Uh, but yes, uh, time for the main book of this episode. And it, if you've been uh, focusing on the playlists, you will have noticed that um, I've actually changed one of the names of those playlists. So it used to be Doctor Who. Now, if you look at it now, it's titled Who Universe, and there is a reason for that. So I thought, because uh, obviously I've reviewed all of the Revival series all the way from Rose uh, in 2005 to The Power of the Doctor in 2022, ahead of the 60th anniversary specials um, being released, which when you're seeing this, you'll have seen both the Star Beast and Wild Leander and the Giggle will be releasing it broadcast in a couple of days time. But when I'm recording this on the 17th of November 2023, yes, I'm about three weeks ahead, which I wasn't quite expected. So um, yeah, uh, none of those uh, anniversary specials have come out because otherwise I'd be reviewing them. But yeah, so I thought um, I'd review all of Classic Who, uh, all of the spin-offs, which is Class, Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures, as well as everything Big Finish. So in this episode, there will be three reviews uh, for some Big Finish. We've got uh, one point, uh, a review of Robots 1.1, 1. 1, uh, a review of Once and Future Past Lives, and we've got a review of The Diary of River Song 1.1. But first of all, uh, before I get to any of the reviews, it is, will be the trailer for the robots one. Okay, here goes. Hello, I'm Liv Chenka and I'm here for a job interview. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Robots, Volume 1. You're too cynical. You always were. I'm not a cynic. I'm a romantic who's been let down too often. I shall begin the interview. You were medical officer aboard the space freighter Lorelei. Ah, uh, yes. Although I must point out that I didn't cause the ship to crash into her son. That wasn't actually me. To new beginnings. There is nothing on the file about this incident. No? Well, forget I mentioned it then. It's probably restricted access. Probably didn't happen. Medtech Chenka, your services are required. 
there's too much new. Caldor has changed so much. I imagined a homecoming would be honey, not full of innovations. She's hacked the box. Now what do we do? Med Techchenko must be stopped. I've got a few things to talk to the company about. Med Techchenko, you will not do this. How can you be sentient? There are hundreds of constraints built in to regulate your behavior and processing. This is different. She's a synthetic construct, crafted to look like a ten-year-old female. She's the vehicle for the AI. This is a complete paradigm shift for Kaldoran technology. She'll usher in a new age. Kaldor's a loveless planet. There's no love here. I am not like any other robot. Robots don't tend to make mistakes, Baron. I'm stronger than you, Liv. You can't defeat me. Come on, then! Come and get it! Big finish. We love stories. How was your journey here? I'd prefer it if we could just crack on, if that's okay. Not a massive fan of small talk. I will make a note. Does not enjoy making small talk. No, you don't have to put that down. Oh, oh come on. So, uh, Robots 1, or Robots Volume 1, was released in December 2019 during the events of Doctor Who Ravenous 2, which I will be reviewing later on. I don't know how far away, but I will be reviewing it at some point. Livchenko left the Doctor and the TARDIS behind just for one year, a year during which she would live on Kaldor and get to know her... Wait, wait. Let's try that again. And get to know her sister, Chula, all over again. But Kaldor is going through a period of tumultuous change. Technology is changing at an advanced rate. The robots are evolving. Artificial intelligence is adapting with these changes, so politics is altering too dangerously. Can Liv and Chula make a difference during the most turbulent time in the world's history? So, uh, the little sentence to describe uh, the first story of Volume 1, titled The Robots of Life, written by Roland Moore. Settling into life back on Caldor, Liv investigates a medical centre where the patients are dying. So the cast for this uh, well, well this, this story um, for the box set so some of the uh, characters I'm going to read now they're not all in this story but they will be in some of the later ones which I'll be reviewing in the near future uh, Nicola Walker plays Livchenka Claire Rushbrook plays Chulachenka Eric Carty plays Eric Verin John Coulshaw plays uh, SV90, V88 and V19 Annabelle Dola plays Jasta Crick. Daniel Good plays Kelloff. Jay Griffiths plays Tilrock. Anthony Howell plays Vola Crick. Vin Venice Van Summerin plays Viserin. Robot, Rob Robot Robert, there we are, Whitelock plays Stellin. V48 and SV66. Tacey Wiles plays V98 and V7. So next up is my review for the first story in the robots volume one titled the robots of life it starts off with the theme tune for the robots an alarm is sounding a woman woman is screaming in agony she is assisted by a husband and a robot an advert plays focusing on a medical facility Liv is flicking through the tv channels the two main characters Liv and chula are sisters someone has just died a robot logs this death a man insults the robot the robot instructs another robot. Chula does an impression of Liv. Liv and Chula talk about the Doctor. Chula and Liv talk about their father and reminisce about their childhood. Liv comments on the changes on Candor, the planet both uh, Chula and Liv are from, which is where they currently are. Liv sends condolences to Chula about her overseer passing away. Liv is attending a, j a job interview with her employer being a robot. The robot notes that Liv doesn't like small talk. The robot reads out Liv's CV. The robot congratulates Liv on her academic ability. The robot tells Liv that she can't offer Liv a job to an ex uh, due to an expired certificate. Liv reunites with one of her former teachers. Liv has a medical qualification of some kind. Liv meets up with Tula. Liv now has a job in a hospital. The surgeon tells the robot about the relative's reactions to the dead person. The surgeon blames himself for the patient's death. The robot inserts the human insults the human race, not inserts the human race, it doesn't make sense, insults the human race. The surgeon wants to cover up the real cause of the patient's death. Liv is instructed by a robot assisting her. The robot tells Liv 
uh, what it is, it is doing. Liv asks for the robot's help. Liv believes that her former teacher got Liv her job, but later realises that Chula did. The robot covers for Liv's former teacher, Varen. Liv is angry about a couple of things taking place in the hospital. Liv confronts Chula about getting her the job at the hospital. Chula covers for Liv to her boss. Liv instructs her robot to complete several medical procedures to bring the patient back to life. Liv and her robot succeed. Liv, Liv, uh, Liv investigates Varen's patient's outcomes. Chula's boss instructs her to not get distracted by Liv. Liv asks Chula to stay out of her work life. Liv confronts Varen about him blaming a robot for his previous mistakes. Varen explains his actions to Liv. Chula is caught trying to hack a computer system using her boss's credentials. Liv suggests retirement to Varen. Varen's robot listens in on Varen and Liv's conversation. Chula's boss questions Chula. Varen's robot threatens Liv. Chula's boss issues a warning to Chula. Liv and Varen talk to a superior where Varen confesses that the five unnecessary deaths were his fault alone. Varen announces his retirement. Chula is annoyed at Liv for convincing her to go snooping through the company they both work for. Chula forgives Liv. Varen blackmailed his robot. Liv asks Varen's robot to return to work as normal as if nothing has happened. Another robot believes Varen's robot should be deactivated. Chula and Liv ring a doorbell and enter a house. This house belongs to Varen. Liv works out Varen's plan. Varen is a step ahead of Chula and Liv. Liv interrupts Varen's robot. Liv stands up for the robot to Chula's boss. Chula's boss repeats the three wise men riddle to Varen's robot several times. Liv seems to be at a bar. Chula's boss questions Liv. Liv apologises to Chula's boss. Liv insults Chula's boss. Liv blackmails Chula's boss. Chula's boss agrees to do what Liv wants him to do. Chula's boss asks three robots to keep an eye on Liv. Chula's warning has been removed thanks to Liv's blackmail on Chula's boss. Next up will be a uh, the information for Once and Future 1, Once and Future Past Lives. So here is the synopsis for Once and Future Past Lives. The Time War. The Doctor has been injured and brought to a Time Lord field hospital. His body glows with energy, but this, this is no regeneration into a future form. Instead, the Doctor's past faces begin to appear as he flits haphazardly between incarnations. So agreeing to his TARDIS, the Doctor sets out to solve the mystery of his regeneration. Who has done this to him? How and why? From the Earth to the stars, across an array of familiar times and places, he follows clues to retrace his steps, encountering old friends and enemies along the way. Tumbling through his lives, the Doctor must stop his degeneration before he loses himself completely. Settling as his fourth incarnation, the Doctor goes in search of the monk. Uh, with a vague memory that he had something to do with the degeneration. On Earth, the monk is meddling, bringing Sarah Jane Smith to the future unit HQ to steal a device for an alien race. The Doctor must help teach Stuart Osgood uh, fall an invasion before he can the monk about what he knows. The cast for Once in Future Past Lives includes Tom Baker as the Doctor, Sadie Miller as Sarah Jane Smith, Gemma Redgrave as Kate Lethbridge Stewart, Ingrid Oliver as Prechinella Osgood, Rufus Hound as the Monk, Ewan, Ewan Bailey as Mr. Mallory, Bella Vaunt and Baravar. Colin Baker plays the sixth Doctor, Peter, Peter Davison plays the fifth Doctor, Sylvester McCoy plays the seventh Doctor, Stephen Noonan plays the first Doctor. Dan Stark, who plays a field surgeon and a black market merchant. Tim Trelaw plays the third doctor. And Michael Charlton plays the second doctor. Next up is the audio and video trailers for Once in Future Past Lives. From Big Finish Productions. Ah, no! It's wrong! It's all gone wrong! Doctor Who Once and Future Past Lives. I think it's the doctor, sir. Oh, ah, ah, help me! We have to stop it! I must fight it! I must resist! Right, first things first. What's the current situation, Doctor? Short term memory scrambled. <laughs> Tardis bruised and reproachful. Regeneration cycle all over the place. I say, Sarah Jane Smith! You look lost. Oh, it's you. Hello there. Doctor. Kate Lethbridge, Stuart. How wonderful. Hello. Dr. Petronella Osgood, at your service. You might say I'm revisiting a past life. Doctor, 
How far back do you go? I'm suffering from the effects of some sort of degeneration weapon. Finally, our time has come. We've drawn attention to ourselves. Ugh. On the cannons, shoot that thing out of the sky. It's coming right for us, isn't it? Yes, at quite considerable speed. Mm, perhaps we should. It's too late. Big finish for the love of stories. We have to stop it! I must fight it! I must resist! Must stabilize. Must find. Must hold on. What was I saying before I interrupted? Right. Oh yes, find the bunk. Next up is my review of Once and Future Past Lives. The Doctor degenerates into seven, six, five, one, two, three, and four. The Doctor is hoping to locate the Monk theme tune. The Doctor has landed on Earth. The Doctor finds the Monk. The Monk seems to be in a hurry. The Monk has stolen one million pounds. The Doctor wants to chat with the Monk. The Monk runs away from the Doctor. The Monk insults the Doctor's TARDIS, having a broken comedian circuit. The Doctor startles the Monk. The Monk has investigated, invested even his stolen money. The Doctor tells the Monk about his degeneration. The Monk trades his briefcase full of diamonds for a device. The Monk causes the Doctor to fall asleep. The Monk runs away from the Doctor again. The Monk uses a fake name to gain access to a building. The Monk has nano bombs in his brain. The monk is threatened. Sarah Jane is kidnapped by the monk. The doctor is tracking the monk. Osgood calls Kate, telling her that an alarm has sounded. Kate and Osgood meet face to face. Osgood shows Kate which alarm has sounded. Osgood believes it is a clocking device. Cloaking device even. Not clocking. That's how it's spelled. Not how it says. Uh, Kate insults the RAF. The alarm is speeding up. Aliens have landed on Earth. Kate and Osgood run from the aliens. Kate and Osgood trick the aliens. The Doctor meets Kate. Kate introduces Osgood to the Doctor. The Doctor explains his degeneration to Osgood and Kate. The Doctor recognises the aliens from a previous encounter. Kate explains that Unit HQ is meant to be TARDIS proof. Osgood blurts out where a weapon is to the Doctor. Kate shows the Doctor where the Black Archive, black archive is. The Monk with a kidnapped Sarah Jane have landed in the Black Archive. The Monk introduces the Black Archive to Sarah Jane. The Monk threatens Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane works out why the Monk uh, kidnapped her. The Doctor doesn't like Kate using the word impossible. The Doctor calls one of Unit's protocols stupid. The Doctor catalogues the contents of the Black Archive. The Doctor tells Kate and Osgood that the Monk is behind the Black Archive being infiltrated. The Doctor reunites with Sarah Jane. The Doctor explains his degeneration to Sarah Jane and introduces her to Osgood and Kate. Sarah Jane knocked out the Monk. Uh, the monk is annoyed that the doctor keeps getting in his way. The monk tells the doctor, Sarah Jane, Kate and Osgood, that he has nanobobs in his head. Kate is opposed to Osgood referring to the doctor's antics as adventures. The doctor in intimidates the monk. The doctor tells the monk how he has been able to track him. The monk runs away again. The monk leaves in his TARDIS. Osgood knows where the machine they need is. The machine is at Osgood's house. Sarah Jane gets overwhelmed. The doctor changes the subject when Sarah Jane asks how old the doctor is. The Doctor calls Osgood wonderful. The Doctor, Sarah Jane, Kate and Osgood go searching for the Monk. The Monk completes his mission. The Monk's boss is an alien. The Doctor saves the Monk's life. The Doctor reintroduces Sarah Jane to the alien as well as introducing Kate and Osgood to the alien. The Doctor insults the alien. The alien insults the size of the UK. The alien keeps the Monk hostage to stop the Doctor from interfering. The Monk insults the teleport. He has just been sent through. The alien tried to stop Doctor from landing his TARDIS and saving the Monk. 
the alien insults the monk, the Doctor, Sarah Jane, Kate and Osgood hatch a plan to save the monk and stop the alien. Osgood is fangirling about helping the Doctor to pilot the TARDIS. The TARDIS is accelerated towards the alien spaceship. The Doctor, Sarah Jane, Kate and Osgood exit the TARDIS. The Doctor insults Kate and Osgood. Instructs, not insults, instructs Kate and Osgood to protect the TARDIS. They ignore the Doctor's instructions. The Doctor and Sarah Jane try to catch the aliens by surprise, which is thwarted by Kate asking the aliens to surrender. The aliens think of Kate as a worthy opponent. The aliens set Osgood free. The monk gives some advice to the Doctor. All of the aliens, but one die from old age. The Doctor neutralises the nano bombs in the monk's brain. Sarah Jane feels sorry for the aliens. The Doctor says goodbye to the monk and Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane asks the Doctor what the truth is. The Doctor says goodbye to Kate and Osgood. And at the beginning of the episode, I said I'd be doing three reviews. Um, unfortunately, due to time, um, that's not possible. So in the next couple of episodes, I'll be reviewing uh, the first story in the Diary of River Song Volume 1 box set. Uh, but yes, yeah, so in this episode, I have reviewed both uh, Robots Volume 1, Story 1, The Robots of Life, and Once in Future Past Lives. So let me know uh, if you've listened to them, what you thought. If you haven't, let me know what you thought of my reviews. Um, and remember, and do that in the comments below, please. And you can also like and subscribe. And that's it for the Everything Podcast Season 2, Episode 133. Goodbye. <laughs>